Hello and welcome to the Talk Seagulls show podcast. I'm not even going to have the debate again, um, but we are in somewhere a bit different today. It's been a month, I know, um, <laughs> but <laughs> just ignore that bit, right? We are in the Caxton, um, just outside Brighton Station-ish, a little bit more of a walk than before, um, but I'm joined with Adam McDonald. Adam, mate, it's a pleasure to have you on as always. Pleasure to be here, mate. I'm, I've been buzzing to come on for this for a while, so it's yeah. great to be here. Mate. No, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, look, obviously we've been playing for a couple of weeks, um, so... Actually, the thought of Brighton's not even in the forefront of my mind not at, all, at the yeah. moment no, until yeah. we play City and then probably lose. <laughs> um, but I want to ask you about sort of, it's been a bit of a struggle of the last couple of months, hasn't it? For yeah, form. yeah. Um, the reality is Europe might not be a case next season. It's not to say it won't happen, but the, the form suggests it probably won't. Yeah. Um, and I want to just really get your thoughts on is that that much of a bad thing yeah. for Brighton this season? Nah, I mean it's I don't it's not like an it's not a bad thing. It's definitely I think if you if we'd gone to the start of the season, I think it probably would be a disappointment. You know, Brighton's sitting in tenth at the moment. It's pro, it's definitely not what the club and the Derby would have been aiming for. But I think you've got to be realistic. Fans have got to be realistic. I think to be fair, for the most part, fans are being realistic about it. And you know, you can't expect a club not in transition, but they're definitely building, aren't they? And they're kind of you know they're growing it's not realistic to expect that every single season. And I think it's been a good season from a fan perspective. It's been a fun season. It's been a great mm. season. We've had some amazing new challenges and uh, new experiences and you know, it's been fun, but yeah, we probably won't finish in Europe. And I, I think that's all right. I think that, that puts Brighton in quite a good position going into next season. Um, and with, you know, all the reports around Brighton and Tony Bloom, you know, being prepared to maybe spend big this summer and kind of, take things to the next level. I think we're not in a bad position kind of going forward. I don't think it's the end of the world at all. I mean, what what do you think? Is it, is... No, I don't either. I, I just want to really get the gauge because, I mean, there's been a lot of probably diversity, I'd say, on social media, in particular yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. You know, of people saying where Brighton was and where we were. And, you know, it's always, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself. And I think that it's quite mad that, as I said a couple of podcasts ago, I think it was on with Robert Dugmore, and we said that it's the first season where we've not had to worry about relegation. The Definitely. second season we've not had to worry yeah, about relegation, yeah, yeah. which is insane when you put it yeah, into that yeah. sort of perspective yeah. that now that we're not getting Europe after only doing it for the first time in our history is a disappointment. Um, but people forget the the beginning of the season and the amount sort of that we, we've had good moments. Definitely. And like I think back to one of my kind of from home games in particular, I, I always just think back to like, the summer summer home games when we like we beat Newcastle, the Ferguson yeah. Hattrick, like that Newcastle day was yeah, brilliant. It was amazing. Like we, we there was there's been some amazing games, obviously traveling around Europe with Brighton, you know, it's unbelievable. I think more broadly though, like the point you say about kind of it's one of the one of the first few seasons where we've not had to worry too much. I mean, you gotta remember, like last season, two seasons ago, the public aim, the one that was kind of put forward from the club was, you know, consistent top ten finishes. So, you know, I think we've got to dash that now. Yeah, we've got to remember that. Like, we're probably going to finish in the top 10 again. You know, I think we'd be very unlucky not to. I think it's a good season. And, you know, I know it's the age old thing at the moment, but like in, with injuries, with everything that we've had, I think that there have been games this season. And I, I, I've said it myself, you know, on my own platforms and stuff that I think there have been games where, you know, we've been found out. I think I do put some results on Deserby. I think it's not been completely plain sailing you know i think back to that first leg in in rome for example um but we're in a good place man we're in a good place mm. i'll get your take on that to actually deserve because you know there's been a lot of lot of noise yeah and this is this is weird for us yeah. like you know manager noise mid-season since yeah, probably yeah. december and it's um, like even with potter as well like yeah. there wasn't there wasn't loads of noise until no, he really it went happened. it went yeah. and yeah. it was gone yeah. Yeah. i think the potter thing was done in a few weeks yeah um, yeah, and it was always like, oh, you know, he'd be great for Man United, he'd be great for Spurs, yeah. but like pro an approach was never really yeah. made until the Chelsea thing came in. And you always had that thing of, you know, did Potter get tapped up with the Kukurai yeah, yeah. deal? And that's one of them conspiracy <laughs> yeah. theories that probably I could believe, you know. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, apart from that, I don't think there's any real concern. I don't think a lot of people thought even Potter would leave. Whereas no. Deserby, it seems like people have almost written in their head that there's a good chance he will. Yeah. I'm not personally sure he will myself, if yeah. honestly. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit like... I, I got to a point where I thought he will go. And yeah. I got to a point where I thought, nah, he's definitely going to stay. Yeah. I'm probably somewhere in between. I would say, if anything, I'm more on the side he would stay. Yeah. Just on the basis of, you know, the way he sort of changed his tone in the last definitely. few weeks again. But in general, I want to get the take of, is this, is this helpful, do you think, in, in, our, in such a big season where we've had a lot of 
injury troubles. It's been quite difficult, but you know, the amount of social media noise we're not used to having, it, it has to get to the players, doesn't it? Surely. Yeah. I don't know. You'd think so, wouldn't you? You'd think it would get to the players. I would say, in my opinion, the reason that maybe we've kind of quote unquote fallen off in these last few months, I don't think it's necessarily to do with the fact that there's been loads of noise around the Zerbi's future. No. I think we've just looked, we've looked, you know, not knackered, we've just looked done. Like <laughs> since we dropped out of Europe, I think it's, it was such a kind of momentum shift where we, it seemed like all life was just sucked out of us, coupled in with like some dodgy batterings against like Luton before that and kind of uh, was it Fulham as well I think that's kind of what's taken the sting out of our season a little bit not so much the speculation around Deserby. I actually agree with you I, I think if I had to stick my neck out I'd say I think he's going to stay as well mm. I think the Liverpool one was the one that really worried me was like you know did I, you really yeah I think I think that would be that was the one I thought like Oh, if, if they wanted him, he would absolutely go. Mm. Uh, and the fact it seems like they don't, they don't want him, I think that, to me, I suddenly sit and think, well, I I maybe buy him, well, but like... I don't think Bayern want him yeah, as much that's as what I mean. Like, I, I think he'll stay. See that. I think, and I think he was, you know, it was interesting all that chat in the in the press conferences. I mean, we saw it a lot. I mean, you would have seen it firsthand, like him talking pretty much before January, through January, and then mm. outside of January, like... The fact he wanted players was, was so obvious and he mm. wanted that backing and he didn't get it. But it was weird how he kind of really turned it up about a month ago and mm. then kind of completely cooled yeah. off from it. I, yeah, I think I think there's also a bit of a reality check there. Yeah. You know, at some point it's like, OK, I, I think sometimes sometimes the fans did actually disagree with him at, at times. Definitely. You know, he got to a point of, you know, there's only so much you can ask and beg. And if it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Yeah. There's nothing you can yeah. do to change it now. Yeah. I actually... And probably more on the club side for January. Yeah, oh, um, definitely, definitely. In terms of, I don't actually don't think there was a great deal of players available no. at a good price, ready for the team, like it was being made out there was. And, and no one could have foreseen like the injuries. Do you no. know I mean, like if we did have a fully fit squad, like, yeah. I agree with them in summer. Yep. I agree with them in summer because you can't go and lose your two best players, no. and that's that's a whole different conversation. But January, I was probably more on the clubs thinking of. You know, if we did go for Dewsbury Hall, for example, if we did go for any of the players, it would, it would have to be when it completely suited Brighton. Do you yeah. know what I mean, we couldn't overpay. We could have had to overspend yeah, on exactly. him. Exactly, we'd have had to spend. I think Leicester wanted forty-five yeah, million, which, ridiculous. which we're never going to do. And mm -hmm. anyone knows Brighton. Anyone? Mm -hmm. When have we spent forty-five million yeah. just like that? Yeah. Because and sorry, we have like, to. I'm not saying like when I say it's ridiculous. I'm sure Leicester fans will be going, "Oh, that's not ridiculous. He's worth it." Yeah, I'm sure yeah, he is not worth that. Point. that but like that for us, like we're not going to do that in January. I mean, we're just not going to do that. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of takeaways but my my main point is I, I i feel like you know at some point you question you know whether he actually cares and whether he actually mm -hmm. don't and i think that that going to the fans i think he does yeah. uh, and i think that a lot of it did turn into a lot of speculation a lot of stuff that he says in the press conferences does tend to get sort of mistranslated Definitely. because his english isn't you know particularly the best so when he says something it it comes across completely wrong mm -hmm. um but like i think because I've because I've sat and listened to it so much, I'm like, okay, I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah, so when I yeah. when I transcript it, I word <laughs> it in a way that him, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like sometimes I'm thinking, you know, obviously when people just post a flat out quote or they hear him speak yeah. and he says, you know, I said this to Tony, I said this yeah. to Paul, yeah, yeah. and it's like it sounds yeah, like he's barging into it's the like, office. I said this to Paul, Tony. It's yeah. like a jab. But I'm thinking yeah. I don't think it's quite like no, that. All, yeah. I think it's more like I I just spoke to Tony. Yeah, like I that. spoke to Paul Barber, and that's I think that's just a normal conversation. Yeah, like they're having conversations about the season, as they probably do continually throughout yeah. the season about who they're going to bring and what the plans are. And I mean, I think we will have to kind of back him by the sounds of, of it course. if we want to keep him. I think that's quite obvious. He's made that quite clear. But I think, to be fair, the club, from what they've been putting out, it does seem like they're prepared to make, you know, for a while it's like Brighton won't overspend, Brighton won't go for kind of this level of player. They'll be fishing in this kind of pond here. But it maybe mm. seems like they might be getting ready to make that step into kind of, I'm not saying go and buy some like top, top, top class, really expensive players, but kind of just maybe shopping in different markets a little bit, making some more statements on he's going and doing another one of those like Jal Pedro 30 mil out of mm. nowhere, just like, oh my God, 30 mil. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. I think I think we will see that. I'd be interested to know your thoughts on like, because for me, I I think, I, I got very um, frustrated with Deserby with like, after that first leg in Rome, you know, going away in Europe, I saw sort of so naive, get beaten 4-0, I thought it was ridiculous, you know, 
the fact we can get battered by teams like Luton and, you know, <laughs> Fulham yeah. as well, I think we, we seem to really lack that kind of game management, that kind of now a little bit. I would have thought you're going away to somewhere in Europe, for example, and you'd shut up shop or you'd kind of, you'd go one nil down. That's not a bad result. Get back to the Amex. It seems like we, he's not quite learned that way to kind of like maybe manage a team, manage a game, kind of show that. I mean, under Potter, we might not score goals, but we were really hard to beat mm. or it does feel like, there's a bit of a naivety with this Deserby side. Like I agree. I, th- I think so. I think I think it also comes down to the team as well. Yeah. Um, I think it comes from both sides. I think when you look at last season's defence, it was a lot better. And, and people were saying it was a myth that Deserby's teams conceded so much as they yeah. do. This season we've had to chop and change a lot. I the one thing I have not always agreed with was the rotation of goalkeepers, but I think that's you know, I think that most people would have probably said that and maybe yeah, yeah. I reserved that a bit because I thought, look. It's an innovative thing. Yeah, could work. Yeah. It's a it's a complete gamble yeah. from my perspective. Subs so gonna see it. Yeah. In the end, it didn't work, and we've just stuck with Bart, and I think that's the right decision now. Definitely, yeah. Um, but also, there's probably a bit of you know he was he's what 21 yeah. part of a broken, yeah, so yeah. you can't expect him to just be playing every game all the time if he's not quite there yet. Um, but at the same time, I think yeah, the the some of them defeats and the way we've capitulated has been a very common theme. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you look at Villa, you look at Roma, you look at Fulham, as you say. Um, they're very similar in in terms of we concede once, we concede again, concede again, mm-hmm. and it's like all of a sudden three nil down, and you've got everyone looking at each other thinking, "What's just happened there?" Yeah. Um, at the same time, Marseille proved that we could get hit twice, yeah. come back, bounce back, yeah, um, on the biggest stage as well because yeah. Marseille in the semis now, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, you know they've done really well in Definitely. the Europa League. So that, that's something to take away again, and then we beat them obviously in the reverse mm-hmm. fixture of one nil. Yeah, and that was like you know we were able to. To manage that game pretty well, the home leg and get the goal we needed. But look at that defense. I mean, Van Hecker last season, until they played, until, until we played City, yeah. no one had Van Hecker as a starting Absolutely. player. Absolutely. And you, you know, Dunk as well has to, you know, he's yeah. not probably been at the best level yeah, not been of best Lewis season, Dunk yeah. of the last couple of years. Yeah. I think once Dunk sort of starts sort of dropping off, a lot of other t- players drop off as yeah. well. For me, I think JP's been player of the season, Unbelievable, really. and that that goes probably without saying, unless you argue Pascal. I I, I voted for Pascal. Actually, Did you? But. It's marginal. But I think JP should get it. My thinking was Pascal's only won it once since he's been at Brighton. I just kind of think there's something that feel, feels quite wrong about that. Yeah. I kind of feel like he deserves it. Same with one. Dunk, isn't it? He's only got it like yeah, twice, I like, think, or something, which so is always insane. Mine was more sentimental, the reason. But I think clinically, if we're looking at it, I think JP is the player of the season. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the, the way he's come on. Yeah. But Some that's what I mean. No one saw that. So mm-hmm. this is what I'm saying when... When you look at defence this season, we've had to change goalkeepers a lot. We've had a lot of injuries right and left back. Yeah. Estupinian missed a lot of the season. Yeah, yeah. Last, you know, beginning of this season and last season, we were saying he's competing as best left back in the league. Yeah. Now he probably looks a shadow of that, and that's down to a lot of injuries. Um, now he's done his ankle again at, at Burnley. Then you look on right side, we've got Veltman <coughs> has been quite inconsistent with his mm-hmm. fitness. Lamptey, as we know, yep. can be quite inconsistent with fitness. We had Jack Hincherwood playing yeah, there for a good portion of the season. Know, yeah. Then he got injured as well. So, um, you know, I think that that back four has not been settled yeah. literally all season. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. when you had last season, we knew that it was going to yeah. probably be Veltman over Lamptey. Yep. And it was going to be Veltman, Dunk, Cole Will, yep. Estipinia, yep. back four. Yeah. And we knew that that was That'd a great be, yeah, team. Yeah. And like maybe like Webster would come in for like one game or something mm. every now and then. Yeah. But Cole Will and, and Dunk were <clears throat> immense. Absolutely. Absolutely immense. And I think we forget how good they were together. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we don't like to talk about Levi Colwell now because he's at Chelsea <laughs> and he's gone, but it's true. No, it was unbelievable. It, he, it was, was unbelievable. he was. He was so was ridiculously good for yeah, a twenty-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and having that left footer as well, like, yeah. I think it did make a difference in terms of the way we played out. Like Igor, do really like Igor, but he's definitely still adapting, isn't he? He's probably mm. kind of like where I'd think kind of JP was maybe this time last season. Like hopefully next season he can kick on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's interesting with Zerbi. I, I, I wonder whether that's kind of you know. I wonder why top clubs maybe are a little bit put off by him, like well, you know. Yeah, I think I think they should be because of what though. Because I don't think that there's enough consistency. I don't yeah. think he's been here for long enough. I don't think there's anything to say you can wholeheartedly say ready for a big move. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that Caicedo, when he went to to Chelsea, was actually a year away from a big move. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen it. Yeah, Whereas I, I think that. Alexis was ready, and you've seen it. No. Um, and that's that's the difference. Even from like a mentality thing as well, like. Alexis would like step up in those clutch moments with me, mm. like obviously with winning the World Cup as well. You could tell he was like, he had the stature World of the Cup players. Yeah, hundred percent. You think back to that Man United game at the end of last season mm. as well, to stepping up, taking that pen. Like, 
Yeah, he, he became he, the man here. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Whereas it's a shame he didn't get to see it for another year. A hundred percent. And like, you can't expect that. And I think, that, I think that's been a massive thing. And I mean, I know it's it's something that everyone speaks about, but you can't you can't blame the club. Obviously, you know, you, you bring in someone like Belaber, and you kind of hope that he'll be able to kind of just slot in and work. But I think. You, you can't underestimate the impact of those two players leaving. No. I mean, that that's a massive, massive... That's, that's what I'm saying. So them two players leaving, but probably one was not quite ready. Yeah. And you've seen, you know, he's, he's gone to a very unstable yeah, yeah, setup yeah. as well. Um, and that's what I think about De Zerbi. I think I don't think it's ready yet. Yeah. Um, and that's me being brutally honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I'd say uh, if he was ready, I'd say, yeah, do you know what? You've done a really good job here. Take my hat off to you. Leave respectfully if you go, but... I back you in your next role. Mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't say that. He's only 44. 43, 44, 43. Yeah, yeah. So that's not very old no, manager not at all. At all. Not at all. Like, like, this is never going to happen, but like he could manage Brighton for another 10 years and yeah. still be like a young manager. Yeah, Do you exactly. know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. Like 50, 50 is where you start making your bigger moves. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you look at like Angelotti and stuff, you know, the, the, how much they've achieved in the game over such mm-hmm. a long period of time. Yep. Um, you know, you even look back on like the winners like Jose Mourinho, like, yeah. where he started at like a Porto, etc. Yeah. Like you have to start from such a, 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 a state and then you have to improve when you're ready to improve. Otherwise you won't get there. Definitely. And I hope that like he does realise, you know, I think Brighton just does make you look a lot, not a lot better than you are, but it's a great place to kind of look. Everything's there for you. 100%. And like, I know, you know, it's something that a lot of people say, but... Potter's the example of that, isn't it? I think De Zerbi maybe just needs to take a look at that and just remind himself of that. Mm. Yes, Liverpool coming in. Okay, maybe you can't turn that down if it were to come in. I don't but think that'll happen. It, no, it definitely won't happen. But like, say it did, you can't turn that down. Like Bayern, I get you can't turn it down, but like, it will cut. That will come again. You yeah. will stay with Brighton. They will like Brighton will bounce back. Yeah. It's the setup just allow like we will continue to climb. Yeah, and grow and develop. And that move will come back. Like mm. I think, I think he's just got to take one look at Potter and just remember that. Yeah, I agree. I think you look at the harsh reality of, of pretty much everywhere else. Mm-hmm. The chance of failing is high. And, like, um, and yeah. I don't think. Sorry, I don't think when you look at say like a Bayern or I don't, I don't, I just I'm even thinking about it now. I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. But if they do come in, and this is the harsh reality for Brighton fans, <laughs> if if a team like Bayern, Liverpool, City, Chelsea, yeah. annoyingly, yeah. United. Tottenham, maybe not Tottenham, yeah. sorry. Maybe but he'd Spurs. go, wouldn't he? But you're going to go. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think like, I mean, if I've got a call in a bit and they say, oh, hi, this is this is Bayern Munich, right? Yeah. Can you come over to Germany? We've got you a really nice yeah. place. We're going to we're gonna sort you out. You're going to yeah. have, you yeah. know, this yeah. and that. We'll, we'll, you'll be the social media guy yeah, over there. No, you're obviously just going to go on. I'm you? gone. Yeah. You won't see me another game yeah, this yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. No, um, But no, like, genuinely, that's what happened. That's progression, isn't it? Yeah, so. Yeah. I think that's just how it works. But it's weird how, I don't know, you, know, you might have seen it a little bit as well. There's, there's been a bit of a flip in kind of like the football fan narrative around De Zerbi a little bit. I've seen a lot of like Mark Goldbridge saying like, you know, De Zerbi's a fraud. Yeah, that's, that's right. Like it's that's, weird how that's, that's happened far. as well, that's isn't it? Like, yeah, it's like, I, I still love him. I think he's amazing. I think he should stay at Brian. I think Brian mm. will be better with him. Absolutely. I think there are a few things I think he needs to improve on personally and kind of... Agree. But... I mean, the idea he's a fraud. That's just ridiculous, ridiculous, isn't it? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Like, I, I think if he did go to a big club, you know, provided he was in the right setup, I think he'd do well there as Agree. well. Agree. And also with all the injuries he's had to battle this season and what, what the club had to go through. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's such a difficult no, job 100%. to take on. So there's that to consider as well. I think, I think he's done a very good job this season. I think there's been question marks over some certain games, but I don't think that he's done anything that would suggest he's anywhere near being a fraud or mm-hmm. you know anything like that Ridiculous. i think i think he's he's closer to being a great manager than anywhere near that bottom end of the barrel um but at the same time i don't think it's quite ready yet yeah. and i think that i hope <laughs> mm. i hope that he agrees with that yeah and, and and would see that and doesn't just think of that next step but unfortunately i think how football works is they won't see that and they will just go i think I think he will see it. I actually think he will see it. And I, I think, hope so. I think he'll be talked into by the club as well. I yeah. Think, I, think he, I think he recognises it now, to be fair. There's a lot of big things this summer as well. I mean, you've got... I mean, if, even talking about Undev coming back. Yeah. You know, he's had such a great season in Germany. Uh, he got called up for the first time, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and then there's talk of obviously us going in to look at maybe some better players in the summer. Um, you know, the, the aim is this this summer to not, you know, 
sell any players, um, you know, to keep everyone. <laughs> well, not at the club. Sell, sell players that we don't want. I that guess. we don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, obviously, if a ridiculous offer comes in, I can see yeah. something happening. Maybe yeah. when you talk about Ferguson or something. But yeah. again, I think the overall thing is don't sell. Don't mm -hmm. need to sell. Don't want to sell. Mm -hmm. I like that for the first time in a couple definitely, of years. Definitely. Um, and then there's a platform, isn't there, for, for the Zerbi to build on. And I think actually what Brighton need more than anything at the moment is just actually a stable year. Mm -hmm, um, because we've had a lot of crazy anomalies in terms of, can I say, the McAllister, but also the seasons before yeah. we lost yeah. Ben White, yeah. Mark Kukureti, Basuma. Yeah. Changing manager. Um, changing managers. You know, there's been so much instability yeah. that, yeah, just that one summer of just yeah. actually having a normal summer what, is needed. What do you think about kind of, you know, Brighton needing to get rid of, not dead wood, but kind of, where would you look at players like Steele, you know, even players like Webster, let's say? I, I want to keep players like Steele and Webster on the base of how good they are around. Yeah. I don't want us to lose that. Yeah, like Lallana, of us Milner. Being, yeah, I don't want us to... Uh, Lallana, Milner, I don't have as much connection to, but the players like Steele, the players like, you know, the, that have been here and understand Brighton, um, I can't speak for Lalana. I can't speak yeah. for Milner, but I don't probably feel like they're Brighton yeah, as no, much 100%, as, yeah. you know, sorry if they're listening to this, they're probably not, no chance they are. Anyway. Sitting there with a Brighton um, Yeah, they're on. sitting there with a Brighton shirt on, looking at it, thinking, well, I'm going to put myself out to my yeah, yeah. Um, But no, I'm just thinking like, you know, in terms of players we've got, I want us to keep that that family club sort yeah, of definitely. feeling, as, as cringy as so, it is. So would you be happy with, with us going to next season with like, Bar number one, still number two, still. Yeah, or and also you, you've got you, Beadle and, and Rushworth. Say, would you want to bring one of those in as a number two? I could see Carl sticking around next year. Yeah. I could. He looks very good, and there's obviously talk of him going to the Euros and there's mm -hmm. the Telegraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which would be pretty mad. But so. as the two, as the number two, and then Steel as a three? Yeah, just keep him around as a three. Yeah. I don't know what happens with McGill. Yeah. Maybe you need some playtime somewhere. Um, maybe Beadle never alone. Yeah, I, um, think, I think that'll be what happens. But I'd like to see Rushworth stick around. Definitely. Um, really yeah. highly rated at South at Swansea. Be unbelievable. Imagine if he did go to the Euros. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine he goes and improves and, <laughs> yeah. and really impresses. Yeah, yeah, we go, yeah. well. And before he's ever even played for Brighton. Two, yeah. two goalkeepers again. Yeah. Um, but no, I think there's a lot there that that's needs to be considered in the summer. Um, I yeah. think, obviously, the obvious is bringing in new players. But I think the biggest thing is keeping hold of our best ones. Definitely. Keep hold of Joao Pedro. Yeah. Keep hold of Karim yeah. Matoma. Yeah. Keep hold of Julio Enciso. Yeah. Even like a Stupinian, you know what I mean? I know Stupinian, yeah. He's not had a great season, but, you know. Agree. Clubs need left backs, don't they? Like, Agree. I want to keep that community feeling yeah. whilst improving. Definitely. Don't get me wrong. I'm not in that person that just always wants to hang on to the past. Yeah, and, yeah. You, know, you don't want to be like that. But at the same time, you don't want to just move too quickly and lose that sort of... You Definitely. Know, that core. It's like him and Webster <laughs> Steele are probably massive parts of that change room, aren't they? Yeah. Like in terms of like the camaraderie, like, you, know, you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose. lose that. You don't. And, you don't. You know, that's that's the biggest bit. And, you know, you, you saw when Potter first came in how much, you know, transition there was. We mm -hmm. lost, obviously, Knockhart, Duffy, mm -hmm. all them sort of players. Um, you know, we had a massive turnover, but we did it in a way that was progressive yeah. and in the best nature for the club. Yeah. Whereas, you know, that whole thing of, keeping players that are probably a bit better around the training ground, less likely yeah. to go out yeah, drinking yeah, after yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's a period of the season, yeah. a period of our life as Brighton fans, and it was great at the yeah, time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we had to get to a point where obviously we're pushing and being more dynamic. Definitely. And becoming more than that. But um, yeah, I think overall we'll see. Um, it's going to be a big summer regardless. But we're talking like it's all over. No, definitely. And it's not. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the fixtures now and you mm -hmm. might be able to tell me that it is. But obviously we've got... City next, and then we've got Bournemouth, isn't it? And I think mm -hmm. there's Villa, Villa. afterwards. Yeah. And then this is all off the top of my head. I, I believe it's Chelsea, Chelsea Newcastle, yeah. then Manchester United. United. Yeah. It might be Newcastle before Chelsea now. I yeah. can't quite yeah, remember it, the way it's, around. It's, yeah, they it's got Villa, moved, didn't it? Newcastle, Chelsea, Man United. Man United. Yeah. By the way, those last three games there, if by any stretch of the imagination we could pull off a miracle, yeah. um, we couldn't play anyone better than teams above us. And mm -hmm. I say this in a way of... There's two ways of looking at it. Completely agree. You've got, you look at the way of, of, you know, the teams above you are intimidating. They're going to be competing with you. Or you look at it in the way of the teams above you are there to be overtaken. And if you beat them, then you go above them. Simple as that, right? Yeah. And I think that's my positive mindset mm -hmm. of looking at it. And I'm thinking, look, okay, we're not in the best fitness. Mm -hmm. We're not in the best form. Jao Pedro is only half fit and CISO is even less so. Yeah. But... If by any stretch of the imagination we do get past Man City in an okay form, yep. those games aren't impossible Definitely. to go on and say, look, there is a possibility of getting 
some decent points on the mm-hmm, board mm-hmm. and whilst overtaking the, the, the ones above us. Definitely. And like, for me, I sometimes, you know, feel more comfortable or confident of Brighton winning, weirdly, when we're playing against teams above us. playing And not expected a, to. Not expected to, yeah. Like, I think, I'm not saying it's a pressure thing, I don't know what it is, but like, I'd rather we played, I'd almost back us more against like Man United at home, against like yeah, Sheffield United at home. Like mm. I, I would, I weirdly would back us yeah. more. And at the end of the season, there's always a bit of a funny feeling about end of the season. Yeah. We've pulled off some good results against big teams at the end of the season in recent years. So I think it's on paper, it's tough. And in my head, I'm just thinking, you know, I've, I've resigned myself to the fact we're not going to finish in Europe. Still think it's been a very good season. But I suppose you're right. It is all, it's technically all still to play for. Yeah. And we could disrupt, you know, some of those teams above us. We'll you probably know. go and get a decent result against City, mm-hmm. lose to Bournemouth, because that tends to be how it works. Yeah, then we'll lose to Villa. Yeah. Um, but then we'll beat the rest. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go yeah, beat you like Chelsea, yeah, we'll Newcastle. Chelsea, yeah, yeah. Every, all of yeah. the rest will be yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that tends to be how we work. But I don't back us against Villa. That's the one no, I really God, don't. No, yeah. um, Newcastle away might be difficult, but Chelsea at home, I think yeah. there's, there's always that added edge. It's Definitely. now a night game. I was going to say course. weekday evening. Um, that make, that, yeah, does that. make a difference. Yeah, um, and obviously City as well. You know, yeah. but they, yeah. they've not had it all their way when Definitely. they come to the Amex Definitely. in the past. At the best of times, they have been champions. By the time they got here, mm-hmm. and they actually won the league at mm-hmm. the Amex as well, didn't they? Yeah, um, and I think even last season they don't. I think they'd won at the game before or something. Or, yeah. Oh no, maybe not. I think they were there. I think they're yeah, pretty, they're pretty much, much there, weren't they? Yeah. So they didn't mind drawing yeah. to yeah. us as much as they could have done. Um, we've never disrupted City as well, like we have done to the Arsenal, yeah. etc. But um, we'll see. We, we've got them in a couple of days. Let's get you a little City prediction because this should go out before then. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just give me a bit about it. You never know, do you? Put you never, way. you never know. I think, I think, I think, I think City will win. I think, I think Brighton will lose. But um, like I say, I always have, <laughs> always have a bit more hope with those yeah. kind of like Thursday night under lights in the summer. It'll be like this. It won't be dark completely by the time kickoffs come. I think like I've just got all these memories of like quite good games when when the that Julio the, goal last yeah, like year. The settings so like, good, like, yeah, settings. Yeah, exactly. And like maybe it's just kind of your mind playing tricks and you're telling you, oh, that will happen again. But I think, I mean, I guess the only thing last season, like they came when they they had essentially won the league and they were they were basically trying to just get rested up for kind of an FA Cup final and like Mm. Champions League final pretty much. And I suppose they're in a bit of a different place right now. I suppose there's still a title race that needs to be won for them and they need to be bang at it. So I just think that they're looking very slick. And they've got, you know, results in their favour. They've got the Premier League in their favour at the moment. I think they will come. I think they will just get the job done. I think Brighton will play well as they always do against big teams. They always tend to play well. They never get rolled over really. Um, And I, I think we probably, probably won't be able to get a result. Although I think there's a chance, there's a chance. Okay. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I I don't know. You know, I'm actually I'm I'm weirdly weirdly optimistic. Like I yeah, because yeah, <clears throat> I look at like, I, in fact, you know, I won't even look at the past. I look at now, and as you say, we've got such a such a run in, mm-hmm. such a run in, and I think that that's almost one of them where it's like it's us against everyone now, and we've just got to go for it. And who better to start off against than the <laughs> champions? Probably. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to say we'll, we'll get a draw. I actually am. I don't know why I'm saying nice. that, but there's something in my head that's saying we could. I don't know why. Yeah. We've got, I've got no reason to say that. We haven't scored an open play for like five games, but for some reason I think we're going to beat City mm-hmm. and or as, get a draw. And as well, like we've, you know, you can almost see it's like we're, we're heading into like a, a new stage of the season. Like, you know, we've had a little break, you know, this last couple of weeks. Maybe we can reset, we can go again, and we go into this final stretch of the season. Maybe things will be a little bit different. You know? Oh, like, God. And like, I just think when the season's coming to an end, you get some weird results. So maybe that'll be, that'll be how it happens. Full-time City 4, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Dunk I red card, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. Two own goals. Yeah. Be, the season's over, <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Adam, absolute pleasure. Pleasure, mate. Lovely to be here. Top thank man. you mate legend um, thank you for joining me in the Cax in the course um, it's been good fun um, make sure you follow Adam as well follow all of our socials put them in the links in the in the description follow us on Spotify and YouTube that's what this will be on anyway um, hopefully before City because if not that's going to look really stupid isn't it um, come down Caxton as well of course uh, we'll see you yeah, around Brighton it is very good it's, you've got the Mito Mini you've got a bit of Joao Pedro you yeah. name it it's some memorabilia in here and he's probably got some more downstairs as well <laughs> to be honest uh, but yeah join us again of course See you soon, and um, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I ain't done that on this for a long time. Right now.